Won't return my car. I'll reclaim it the hard but fun way. Backstory. Before I met my now husband, he was married and divorced. We'll call my husband H and his ex-wife D. Theirs was not a marriage of love, but a marriage of financial benefit. He was 19, she a little older. He was in college, but she couldn't afford to go. He was able to get grants and some small loans to afford college because his parents were dead broke. Her estranged father made too much money to qualify. So they got married. So the powers that be to no longer considered her parents' income into her ability to pay, part of the application for grants. He worked in commercial real estate and went to school part-time. With his income and both their grants and loans, she was able to go to school full-time. And they graduated at the same time. They stayed together through and a little bit after college. Although they didn't really love each other, they did like each other. He started making a decent living and learned to appreciate the finer things in life. His upwardly mobile career allowed them to buy and sell their first house and then buy a second, nicer home. He also leased them both brand new cars. In 2000, my husband started to feel like their time together had passed its prime. She agreed. They started the divorce process, and since her job didn't pay that much, ETA, they sold the house for a loss during the divorce process, so nobody got that. He decided to give her all the furnishings in their home paid for by him, agreement to finish out the remaining months on her very nice SUV's lease, in his name and $500 plus per month, ETA, which if included the divorce decree and not as a separate agreement attached and referenced in the decree, is considered alimony in our state, regardless if it's called by the name alimony in the decree or not, and as such can be altered if the supported spouse remarries or either party has a significant change in income. In this case, she remarried. Her marital income more than tripled and H's income was zero dollar for an, at the time, unknown period of time. Half of his, not inconsequential, savings and retirement accounts, 100% funded by him. She always spent any money she had left after bills on shoes and clothes, never opened or contributed to a savings account. He was very generous, considering our state would not have required he pay any alimony and only a split of commingled assets and he had come into the marriage with a small sum of savings he never commingled that he could have kept. They used a divorce in the box type place that does non-contested divorces on the cheap. They were amicably divorced 90 days later and both dating their future spouses within a few months of that. My husband and I started dating in early 2001, two, three months after the divorce was final. A year and a half after the divorce, I moved in with my husband and she married her extremely well-off financial boyfriend. Her screw up. A few months later, my husband really wanted to make an upward job change, different position in the same industry, which would significantly lower his income for a short time, zero dollar for at least four months, and then a slow but gradual increase, resulting in significantly more income after about at least a year of ramp up. My income could just barely cover all our bills, my soon to be car payment, my car was on its last legs, and I desperately needed a new car and his car payment, but I didn't have enough to cover his ex-wife's $500 plus a month car payment. He decided that since D was remarried, he should not have to continuing paying for it and should be able to take the car back, and I could drive that instead of buying a new one myself. He thought it was fair, and he read his divorce decree and felt it was possible. We consulted a lawyer who agreed that asking for it back was fair, and although it wasn't written into the divorce decree as alimony, it will likely be treated as such if they ended up going to court, so he had a good chance of winning. H called D to explain the situation. He asked her for the SUV back, but she said no, and ended the conversation. He called her a week later and asked again, stating that if she still refuses, he will take her to court. She said she had spoken to her husband, and they weren't going to give the car back. As an alternative, H asked if they could take over paying all, or at least some, of the car payment, as the $500 plus a month would negatively impact his career advancement. They said they spoke to a lawyer and refused to pay a penny of the payment. On to the next option, court. Our lawyer had laid out a plan for doing it without representation, so he went to the courthouse the next day and filed his complaint. A few days later, D calls and said she had been summoned by the court 
and she and her husband wanted to come over and see if they could work something out without going to court. Great. We figured she had seen that these $500 plus dollars car payments were basically alimony, and she really can't have her ex-husband paying for her car now that she's remarried. She's seen the light. The night she and her husband came over, their solution was not to give the car back. No, their solution was, he turn in the $500 plus dollars per month vehicle, pay the early lease termination penalty, and get her a new 36-month lease on a different, cheaper car, say a $250 one. Considering there were around 18 months left on the $500 plus dollars a month, that would actually cost him more money in the long run with the penalty. That was a big no. ETA, H just reminded me we made a third attempt at a compromise. We asked that they take over the payment until the time at which his income returned to the pre-divorce level by agreeing to share his pay stubs on a monthly basis to verify he was still below thresh. Once he was back to earning what was at the end of the marriage, he would take over the payments again. She said, Well, I talked to a lawyer, and he doesn't think you have a snowball's chance in hell of winning in court. H. Okay, have a good night, bye. And out they went, feeling like they won. The Revenge The court date came, and H shows up in court. D. Nowhere to be seen. His case gets called, still no D. The judge reads the complaint, listens to H's story, and makes his judgment. Paraphrasing, I don't think my ruling would be any different had she showed up to court, but we'll never know. I hereby declare a default judgment in favor of the plaintiff. Once H received a printed copy of the judgment, he hatched his plan. One, he called D, told her he won the case, and asked her for the keys. She said no and hung up on him. Two, he went to the dealership to order two new keys. He had the VIN, and the car was in his, so no problem there. 3. He knew where she worked and her schedule. He ordered a tow truck and requested a sheriff's officer at 3.45 for the next afternoon at her work. D-Day 3.45 the next day, 15 minutes before she would finish, he met up with the tow truck driver and the officer in the parking lot of her work. The officer verified the documents, and they located and loaded the truck onto the flatbed. They moved the truck to the curb right outside the doors to Dee's work. A little after four o'clock, Dee walks out, sees the trio and her car on the truck and freezes in her tracks. This is the paraphrased conversation that followed, Dee. But you can't do that. H hands her the judgment. The officer reiterates the court's judgment. Dee, but I talked to Joe. He said you didn't have a snowball's chance in hell of winning. Those were Joe's exact words. Snowball's chance in Hell. Voice slightly cracking. H thinks for a second to try to figure out who Joe was. She had said it like he knew who Joe was. He tried to figure out a lawyer they both knew named Joe, but he could only think of their mortgage broker, Joe H. Joe, Joe. Like our mortgage broker, Joe. Your lawyer is a mortgage broker? D. Yeah, he said that it wasn't written into the divorce decree as alimony, so you couldn't take it just because I got married. H. Well, the judge may or may not have agreed with you and Joe, but since you never showed up to court, you lost your opportunity to find out. She was left mouth opened, catching flies. He shook the officer's hand, thanked him for his time, said to the truck driver, I'll meet you back at my house, said goodbye to D, and walked away. Just when H neared his car, she screamed, How am I supposed to get home? He replied, Call that pansy ass of a man you call a husband that was okay with his wife's ex-husband supporting her. They get back to our house, unload the tow truck, and the driver was laughing his ass off. When he was finished, he said, that was the best thing I've ever been a part of on the job. He ended up discounting the tow by a bit, saying that's to make up you for having to be married to that entitled woman. I sold my SUV within a week, and I took over the payments for his ex's car. Their divorce was no longer amicable, we got married, had a kid, and lived happily ever after. Moral of the story, pay for your own shit, and don't no-show if you've been summoned to court, even if you think the plaintiff doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of winning, rather. Especially if the plaintiff doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of winning.